Welcome to this episode of Auction Watch, the show where we deep dive into forthcoming properties coming up for sale at auction. As usual, I'm joined by my fellow property auction experts, uh, Piotr Resnick, Hello. Jay Howard, and Rod Turner. Hi. If you're new to this channel, make sure you've subscribed and hit the bell icon. We put out new content every single week all dedicated to keeping you on top of your property investing game. I'm Ranjan Bhattacharya, your host, and today's show, we're off to Suffolk to look at a Barclays Bank building, a lovely little shop and uppers up in Leicestershire, and then we're back down in London for a beautiful freehold shop and uppers uh, down in Islington. Next up, of course, uh, we are going to Suffolk for this lovely former Barclays Bank building. And Jay, you're going to tell us all about this one. Yeah, absolutely. So this is um, lot number 79 in the Allsop commercial auction on the 30, uh, oh, sorry, on the 23rd of March. Um, this is a um, link uh, detached um freehold grade two listed bank which is currently let to barclays bank uh, and that's on 39 high street haverhill um cb9 um it is let to barclays bank uh, until 2026 with no breaks um there was a tenant break option this year which they have not exercised um there is a car park to the rear and there is a rent review next year um what attracted me to this was it is quite a sizable building um, and it's um, it, it kind of it sits nicely on the high street. Um, there is uh, ancillary parking to the rear um, and the building looks like it extends quite far down um, on, on a single story basis um, and, and is, has it's got a really nice what looks to be a grade two listed frontage. Um, so for something like this, I mean, if you look in the Allsop commercial catalogue, there is an absolute slew, a litany of, of boots and Santander's all going for sale, um, but not that many um, Barclays, I have to say, um, over the last couple of months. Um, <clears throat> I, quite like, I quite like the idea of this investment. I think if the bank was to leave in 2026, well, you would have had the income, which is circa 10%. On a, on a gross yield uh, based on, on the, um, the guide range. Um, so it would, have been, it would have been bringing you a return in that time. You could have thought to do anything kind of exotic and sexy to the rear um, or, or indeed to the uppers and then the, um, the retail um, on, the, on the ground floor at the frontage to the high street. So I, I think it offers quite a few um, interesting opportunities. I am. Um... I, I, I agree. I think one thing that's interesting um, is it says on the first floor, it's 10 metres of space. Now, what does that mean? Well, it's, it, it's saying on the floor, when you look at kind of the, uh, the tenancies, it says there's 10 square metres on the first floor. Now, looking at that building, you know there's not 10 square metres. You know it's going to be well as a minimum what the second floor is that's right um so again just uh, uh something to look out for that is so funny <laughs> but usually like those things are, 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 are kind of are wrong because of the fact that those measurements are taken from the business rate valuation office uh, measurements and those those measurements will on the voa website will include things that are relatable for the for the business rates and some of the space is just not relatable so they're not included. Yeah, exactly. Um, it is worth having a look at because I think the uh <clears throat> with banks of course um the vaults are not uh rateable area but those vaults are heavy things they're normally in the basements so normally you see the basement is significantly smaller than the upper floors because um, it, most of it isn't rateable area. So it'll be interesting to find out what the non-rateable floor space is. But that is a problem because I think, when, you know, um, when you go to view a bank building, 
you know, you have to take an ID and photo ID and all of this sort of stuff to get to the space um, behind the public areas. Um, so it's quite a lot of hassle for them to measure these things up. So often they do go on VOA. I mean, I, I think they've just missed, they've put the decimal point in the wrong place, but... <laughs> yeah, that's what that would be my feeling too, yeah. When you look at the back as well. And, and the parking, Jay, it's got a load of parking, hasn't it? Which, um, which looks quite good. I'm just, I'm just wondering, it'll be interesting to see how much residential is above um, shops on that kind of high street, because it looks like it's pedestrianised road there. Or, or at least there's lots of people walking on the road in that image. Um, <laughs> but it's got a great, great sort of sized car park as well, um, nice. which, which looks good. Um, I think I think the, um, the the prices for residential in that area of, of kind of shops above, um, sorry, residential above flats, looks like it's about two thousand six hundred per square meter. So the cost of um, you, you might want to just bear that in mind when looking at if, if someone was to buy this, looking at, right, okay, that's going to be where we're, where we're going to end up. Like, how does that factor in in terms of what you're paying for it per square metre plus what your refurb costs are going to be to, to convert that? Um, and is it, going to, is it going to stack up? But, I, um, yeah, I mean, look, it's, it's, it's yielding well. You've got some time there to do it. We've covered these types of buildings loads. In, Past sort of episodes, haven't we? Where we talk about that you, you've got some time to sort out your planning. All through that time, you're getting income. There's uh, options, different types of options you can do with it. I, I just think this this sort of thing is is a really good option. I, th I think the biggest question building stuff, which might cause you a few few difficulties in terms of kind of dealing with heritage officers and that sort of stuff. But again, I think Ranjan brought up this point earlier of what what a what part of it is listed because it could be that it's something silly like the pillars at the front door or the windows at the front because the back of it is pretty ugly and looks like yeah. an addition so you'd want to just understand what you can what, but, what the issues are going to be around that i think i think that was the one measure that that kind of has me tempered on the value that i'd attribute to the to, to the to the property is is i want to know what would be listed it's clearly not the whole building um for me i would look at it and think the majority of the listing there is in the fascia in the frontage um but you don't know what um uh, the internals if there is like special cornicing or you know what what's in place there that's going to slow that down the other thing i'd just say is that the back part of the building um which is obviously a newer addition to it which um which comes back quite far I mean, that's kind of looks to be crying out to have an extension put on the first floor as well to go up a double storey. Um, and, and so I think there's a fair amount of space you could use on, on that as well. Um, so I do, I do think there's several different kind of things you'd, you'd be looking at here. Um, again, I'm not too sure of what the actual area is like, um, but right on the high street, sort of service to accommodation, that sort of thing will, will do well in these market town kind of yeah, and, and it's funny that we discussed uh, a property in Sudbury recently, this one in Hover Hill, one yeah. new market. It seems like we like this kind of area. <laughs> it's, it's, our, it's our very own Suffolk, got Suffolk Golden Triangle. <laughs> Indeed, yes. And um, I mean, I don't know this area, um, so I won't comment on the um, marketability of residential conversions on it, but just as a building type, uh, from a permitted development angle. That's an interesting rear end, excuse the expression. Um, one of the problems with permitted development and prior approval is that you've got to show uh, that there's natural light to habitable rooms. And one of the things that trips up those sort of projects is that the windows, aren't, there aren't enough windows and they aren't in the right place to carve it up internally into rooms. Here, straight off the bat, there are enough windows all over the place to carve it up however you would like under prior approval so you, you immediately tick the um, natural light for habitable rooms which i think in a building which is next door to a listed building would may represent a bit of a problem if you had to apply for planning to punch in windows so that's a positive yeah 
Yeah, I, f I think this building is going to sell for something around the 8% yield, uh, a little bit like the South Bay one. Um, there's still a long lease, um, five years left. It's, uh, it's enough to attract um, sort of investors looking for yield, I think. Um, so what do you make of that deal? Is that a deal you would do? Let me know in the comments below. And of course, don't forget to like. Uh, smash the like button on this video and subscribe if you haven't already done so. So Piot, tell us about this lovely little property up in Leicestershire. This is my suggestion. Um, and it looks extremely cheap for what it is. Like, I think it's a common theme so far of those buildings. Um, it, this is a uh, number two and three marketplace, Melton Mowbray. Uh, Leicestershire, um, lot number 11 and also commercial auction um, and it's a prominent town centre freehold shop investment guided at 300 to 325 so we know the reserve price would be set between those those values um, and the gross initial yield is seven and a half percent and the entire building is led to a Holland and Barrett Retail Limited um, and um, Basically, what it is, is uh, there's been a lease to Holland and Barrett at 70, um, prior to this being in the end was, so the, the lease to Holland and Barrett was at £35,000 uh, prior to, to renewal. And uh, Holland and Barrett, I read the legal pack, or parts of the legal pack, and Holland and Barrett basically exercised the break clause in their lease and uh, then they use that as leverage to get a new rent and then they agree the rent of twenty two and a half thousand pounds for the whole building so that's what it is um, and the upper parts are quite substantial so this is from probably voa website again but in total the whole space including the basement it's got about six thousand square feet um, and I don't think that's all being used by Holland Barrett, basically. They've got it in the lease, but uh, I doubt they use the upper parts uh, that much. So, um, I think the reason why it's so attractive is because it's a town centre location, again. A very prominent location. The building's got like windows from all sides. Actually, this side it's on the corner, it's got lots of frontage, and I think you would be able to relet this downstairs part to, to like either two or three retailers or even smaller type of retailers. And I would try to get access for upper parts and try to do some other commercial kind of use for upper parts, either serviced offices that we discussed before, or some form of something commercially viable but i think buying the property at such price it, it kind of makes sense how do you access the upper parts can you access it independently of the shop well from the pictures it's not clear but i don't think so at the moment so at the moment for the next three years of holland bar being there for two and a half years now um, I, I think you know you can't do anything but afterwards, I think you could create some sort of entrance over here or over here, like somewhere. We'll get back to the video in just a moment. But what I wanted to really tell you about was what is the most exciting opportunity in property right now. And that is repurposing defunct commercial buildings to residential use. Now, most people don't really know where to start, what to look for and how to exploit these opportunities. And that's why I've prepared 90 minutes of free training for you to get you started on this wonderful journey. You can register for this free training at property-workshop.com. Join me on that free training and I'll leave you to enjoy the rest of the video. Well, it's definitely a lots of locked in value there because, you know, they're, if they're only using, you know, uh, the, the ground floor, maybe even the first floor for storage or for offices or, or whatever, there's still an additional two floors to play with there. So that's quite a lot of locked in square footage that isn't being utilized or, 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 or really valued. So it, it'll, that's an interesting building. I am concerned. Hmm. I don't know this area. 
Um, well, here's what concerns me is uh, the rent was 35K uh, and it's recently been renegotiated to 22 and a half. Now, <clears throat> if the, and Holland and Barrett, like many big companies have played this game at, at, at times that they have been able to in the lease. Now, if the upper parts were of any value, then the landlord would have said, okay, you can have a rent reduction, but we've got to take control of the upper parts. Um, what happens in areas where the upper parts are probably too much hassle to take back is that the land landlord pushes back and say, look, we'll give you a rent reduction, but you keep the whole building because we want you on the hook for the FRI. We don't want to take back the parts because then the landlord is responsible for the maintenance of those parts as well. So that concerns me because anyone, if the, if the upper parts had value, that would have been part of that lease negotiation. So I, I would disagree. Like there are spaces of, for example, Holloway Road, uh, space around uh, that, uh, you, you know that area very well. So the space around Iceland is a gigantic space, unused, totally unused. Uh, the space around uh, above uh, Vodafone, about like quite a few of the retailers there, mm -hmm. totally unused, and you couldn't call this an uh, invaluable space. It's it's actually probably 700, 800 pounds a square foot type space, but it's all about creating access and, and going through the hustle and uh, having the creativity to actually uh, actually do it. And I think a lot of people are just they just like. The, then the easy rent that's coming from a good covenant and that's what they care about uh, and i think a lot of sellers do not have the creativity the willingness and uh, and also the know-how like not everyone watches those videos uh, to to basically have the the ideas that we're saying here and and kind of try them and discuss them with other people i think a lot of landlords are just yeah, it's just that it's it's been it's it's nearly a third, isn't it, that's been swiped off the rent. I, not I mean, to um I, I think it's back. Probably, probably halfway between the two. Um in that yeah, taking a third off the rent shows that look in this in this small town there is likely gonna be an awful lot of boarded up shops and what have you. Having said that. Where it is, is, I mean, this is the prime spot in the town for any retail. I mean, a cafe would be brilliant. You've got three different um, points of frontage on there. It is low value. So, I mean, the residential kind of um, price for flats in the area is about 1,800 quid per square metre. So, to Ranjan's point, repurposing those uppers into anything is, is going to be quite I don't know whether it's going to be cost effective and I, I absolutely get that point of not wanting to have to take liability for an old building um, in an area where let's face it if you've got to fix a building wherever you are in the country there's going to be kind of a, a minimum price you're going to, you're going to pay for that. Um, I think if you I don't to, to convert to residential I just think it's going to be too much um, to do yeah. there and I think you you kind of were talking about offices and things like that up there it just it just depends a bit about what how much demand there is in an area that is quite low value yeah um, for for offices and I'm not sure I'm not sure that the the, what you the, the, pro the, the problem with those sort of areas with the offices is that it is so much more cost effective to buy an office building because the space is not at a premium and that. And then if you've got an office building, you know, you've got um, suspended floors, suspended ceilings, you can run cabling without a huge amount of trunking, you've got air conditioning that's easy to put in. You know, all of this sort of modern stuff that's just base minimum in, a, I think, in an I think office to, building. To be point, sorry. Sorry. Um, to be to be honest point about a lot of landlords just not knowing, I, I do think that's true as well especially with commercial buildings where they would have bought them in their pensions, they would have bought them and they just want an easy life. They're not interested in kind of redoing things. They're not interested in getting creative. And it's, it's a combination of not knowing, but also not having the appetite to, to get stuck into that um, because that's not what they've invested in that building for. Um, 
they, that they is spot on. Passive, passive kind of. I think that, that that's a classic example, like also of our Park News, uh, Park News, Park Avenue News. It's mm-hmm. like those sellers could have done so much better with those buildings, but they sold it to us, and uh, we tripled the value in nine months. Um, so uh, I think a lot of landlords who just don't have appetite to do things is is that but yeah it is a low value area i think you just need to be very creative with the commercial use and the way you structure this but I, I wouldn't want to convert into residential you, you probably right it wouldn't be very appealing to to live there and um i think this is is asking for some kind of commercial use that's going to be profitable So what do you think of that deal? Is that a deal for you? Let me know in the comments below. Don't forget to smash that like button. It means more property investors get to see these videos. And the next pick from the auctions is one of mine, a freehold shopping uppers in Islington. So we're looking at lot 104 in London, um, in N7 in Islington and it's a freehold mixed use building comprising of a William Hill. It's only half the William Hill. Um, the, you're, you're buying the building with the mansard sort of roof and it has uh, three flats above. Um, now I think this will be attractive for a certain type of investor. Uh, what we are about to see is um, you know, once lockdown is lifted, lifted is, of course, a recoil effect in London. Uh, London will bounce back uh, very, very strongly uh, because London is London. It's been London for, uh, it's a major world capital. And as soon as lockdown is restricted, we'll see much, much more activity in the central zone. Um, this location is sort of fabulous. And the the other thing with residential um property in London is you do benefit from capital appreciation. Um, Capital appreciation is likely to be quite strong in London over the coming years, Um, not only because of the inflationary pressures of all this currency printing, but well, that's the main issue, really. There's been so much currency printing, there's going to be an asset price bubble. So, um, you know, London has always been a, a good bet for that. But the interesting thing is London residential yields for buy to let residential property, although you get great capital appreciation, the yields in recent years have been very, very low. And one of the ways of getting decent yields, in net, decent net yields in London is to go freehold, is to go multi-unit and is to go mixed use. Because you tend to find the blended yield in a building like this is far higher than if it was just purely residential. And I know it's quoted in there as being, you know, um, 6.7 or something percent. Um, but I, I, sorry, 6.5 percent. But I think it'll go for uh, hovering around the six or very high fives in terms of um, um, yield uh, because of the commercial element. Um, a lot of some some strictly residential investors may be put off, but um, it's a good it's a good um, capital growth play. Uh, in the short term, and it's a um, upper end of the residential yields that you can expect in London. Yeah, and do you think that um, William Hill will continue given that there are uh, five years to lease holding over? I think it looks likely. Um, well, what, what, yes, I mean, it's a very good point about the betting shop. Um, you got to have a look at the um, the betting shops and where they are with the store closure closure program, um, and you'll find that particularly companies like William Hill they've done their store closing now, um, they've, they've they've pretty much done it, um, so it's likely that it would be okay. But in these sort of areas, you've got to look at the local vibe, you've got to look at the local street scene, the local vacancy rate, and um, Uh, We have commercial units um, all around this area and there is always seem to be a very, very strong market to let these things. That's right. Yeah, I live close by to this place and uh, um, I I, I do shop in the corner corner, uh, 
juice place and uh, I, I, I like this, this area. Oh, I thought he was going to say I place my bets daily in the... Uh... <laughs> when, when, when Piot visits his London holiday home, that's where he shops, yeah. <laughs> Um, I think the thing for me is, is you know, I agree with your points um, about the blended yield. You know, if you're, you're going to buy London Resi, uh, this is a good capital appreciation area. So when the value returns back to London, it's going to do well. Um, the covenant on the commercial, I don't think betting shops carry the same kind of um, class value that they used to. I think there were some dynamic changes to the way they had to run betting machines and things like that, or even remove betting machines which impacted their turnover, which impacts their, their viability over the long term. But in reality, uh, there's already a William Hill there. If it's two separate shops um, and this one is holding over, I would be quite confident in, in getting that relet to somebody else, uh, maybe a, a, a tidier covenant. Um, but yeah, the, it, it, it looks, it, it's a stoic bit, bit of London kit. Um, and the rental income isn't that high, so we remember we're looking at the, uh, a laundry shop, which is right opposite, and I think it was a year ago, a couple of years ago, Yeah. Uh, and that one was producing about £18,000 per annum, so 14 k isn't overinflated. Yes, I mean, I mean Jay's point is, is absolutely spot on, because of course, back in the old days, these people were thought of as great covenants, and now they're not so... So that meant that landlords would have them in at a lower rent than they would accept from someone else. But now they're not, they, they don't have that covenant status anymore. Um, if they were to go, uh, you would get a higher rent from uh, someone else. Betting shops are always paying at the lower end of any parade, of any rents and parades. You tend to find that they've, they're, they're, they're locked in for some of the lower rent, uh, rent and what inspires me with confidence is the fact that all the flats uh, were let in the in the kind of the lockdown period, basically, or the COVID period. So fairly recently, a few months ago. Yeah, the um, the rental market is a little bit uh, uh, strange in that area. It seems to have been severely affected for things like studios and um, shared space. But where there's a discrete small flat, you know, because I guess people wanted to be on their own and all of that, not share and, and COVID risk, um, that that side of the market seems to have um, fared up quite well. And the flats are reasonably tidy inside. Um, and there may even be some serviced accommodation action in there, possibilities with the location, the fit out. I, I, I like it. I think um, it's... It's a good, it's a good total returns kind of play over a long period as well. I think rents will continue to go up in that area for residential. I think also the other thing about betting shops is they're not that desirable to live above. So when you get it out, you often find there's a bit more demand um, for the flats above it as well. Uh, I just, yeah, I think, I think there's um, that that's only going to do better over the next few years and um and so yeah good decent decent buy at that price that's a um another very good point rod they do i mean the um as, if you get the betting shop out uh you'd get more rent for the ground floor but you i don't think you'd increase the rental value of the upstairs because i find renters don't really care but it would certainly do a lot for the capital value i mean if you've got a sort of, you know, little service sector type place, juice bar, something like that, you know, that's not like a betting shop. It will certainly do well for the capital value of the flats above. I think Rod's point is, is also genuine in so far as even if the rent isn't increased, your ability to relet the residential in a shorter period of time is certainly greater. Well, it's the total returns from lack of voids, lack of kind of all that sort of stuff that really does help in that area you've got other opportunities if you wanted to trade on those flats and split them up into into individual leases and things like that so yeah i think i think that sort of thing is a, is a sensible buy far over kind of where i don't know you look in the north at a similar building the big big difference you've got there is the values 
So although the yields might be lower, the values are higher. And then when you start to look at operational kind of costs as a percentage of the rent roll, it's very minimal and doesn't eat into your profits nearly as much over a long term in somewhere like Holloway Road in London versus, I don't know, somewhere up north. Um, uh, we wouldn't call it that much for Holloway Road because it's York Way. It's oh, like Camden Road. Yeah. You call it Holloway in that, but I would call it more Camden. Like, yeah, yeah. I would say right. that, that would be Camden. Yeah, I mean, it's on the south uh, side, so it's much more, you know, walking distance to King's Cross and uh, and, and all of that. I mean, of course, anyone buying this property would need to do a little bit of due diligence, um, make sure that the rent's being paid, make sure that the um, rents are up to date. They probably will be from the William Hill, but make sure the rents uh, are up to date from the flats uh, above, because if they're not, then you as the incoming buyer would have to pay any shortfall uh, in those rents. And also make sure you got all the paperwork um, that the previous landlord should have served on the residential tenants um, prior to letting them, because that will affect your ability to get them out. And of course, do a double check to make sure uh, you're comfortable that the rents being achieved on the residentials are sensible and it's not over rented which is can be a problem or under rented which creates an opportunity so what do you guys think of that deal let me know in the comments below also subscribe hit the bell icon so you're notified as soon as we upload a new video that's it for this episode of auction watch until next time happy investing guys